In part two of this series, I stripped off the formwork from the concrete base I made for the new CNC. And in this one, I'm going to start by painting the inside of the base and that'll help seal the concrete. And it'll also hide my big mistake with the resin that foamed up that I had to pull out. So I got that done and while it was drying, I started working on the aluminum uprights I installed in the last video as well. Like I said in that last video, these are machined for the bearings that will support the lead screws for the Y axis. And two of these smaller holes need to be tapped so that I can screw on a cover that holds that bearing in place. And the cover is just 3D printed. There's a slight misalignment problem here. So I took that screw out and I chased it out with the tap again and put the screw back in. And I did the other side in exactly the same way. Next, I need to cut some three quarter inch plywood. And what these do is they extend the sides and the back up another three inches and also provide space for me to attach the linear bearings. So I'm going to trim off one end nice and square and then flip it around and cut it to length using my mini table saw sled. And here's a neat trick for making a very fine cut off the end. I was just a little bit long with my first cut. So you slide the stock up against the blade with it not running, of course, and then pull it back and recut. And what it does is it takes off a very small amount, if that's all you need to cut off. Using this method, you can sneak up on a perfect fit. With them cut to the right length, I can position the linear bearing. And what I want to do is cut a shallow dado in this so that that linear bearing registers up tight against a very straight edge cut on the table saw rather than trying to line it up with marks. And I accidentally cut this slot too wide, but it really doesn't matter because all I need for it to do is go up tight against the top and that'll index it in the correct place. Now I've got those aluminum strips that I made in the last video and I need to fasten those to the bottom of the side extensions. So I'm going to get those clamped in place very flush with the edge. And I've got my homemade VIX bit here that I made a few years ago to accurately center the hole in these counter sinks. And then I can finish drilling with a longer eighth inch bit and drive in the screws. And you can see how this works. They sit down on the concrete base and those aluminum plates make it so that I can screw these down. Now the piece for the end needs to have some holes drilled and I opted to do this in a way that should have worked properly, but it didn't. And that is to 3D print a template and use tape to hold that in place so that I can drill the holes. And I'm not entirely sure why this didn't work, but the holes are slightly off and I wound up having to do something else to fix that. And I'll show that a bit later. And you can see how that's going to go. I've got it set in place. And now before I fasten that, I want to fasten the sides down to the top of the base. And I'm using number eight, 32 screws. These are not wood screws. These are metal screws. And they're screwing right into those plastic anchors that I cast into the concrete. And to make sure that these side extensions are parallel with each other, I cut this spacer strip that I can clamp in place to hold them exactly the right distance apart. And then I can carefully drill and drive screws through those aluminum plates and into the side extensions. Once again, using my homemade VIX bit to center the holes. And if you haven't seen that video where I made that bit, that's one of the metalworking projects that I talked about in video number one that I've done in the past. And with that done, I can move that spacer strip to the back, clamp it again, and fasten that back panel with two inch screws. Now what I got here are the couplers for the Y axis. And if you watch my other two CNC builds, you'll know that I 3D printed the couplers for those and I have had absolutely no issues with that. 
I used ABS to print these and they're in five pieces so that I could print the coupler vertically to make sure that the holes are lined up. And then the white parts are printed flat on the bed to get the correct orientation to maximize the strength. And I'm using super glue to glue those parts in place. And that makes for a very strong coupler that if I ever do have a problem with, I can always print a new one. And then I can get the screws put in and get it put on the motor. It's a nice snug fit, which is what you want. And then I can get it put in the machine, but I see there's a little bit of a problem here. There's not enough clearance between the coupler and that plywood. So I made this drilling guide from a piece of wood and I'll run the bit in there and that will cut it out enough so that it clears. Before I can screw the motor in place, I need to make these holes just slightly bigger so that I can run a tap through these for number 10 screws. And wood screws probably would have worked just as well here, but I have the screws, so I might as well use them. Now I need to take my end cap off again because I've got to put this piece of threaded rod, which is the lead screw in. And those couplers that I made are actually threaded for this rod. So it just screws in. And that's one of the huge benefits with 3D printing. You can print in threads that work perfectly. And you'll see more of that soon. After I get it screwed in all the way, I need to mark the length and I'm using a piece of tape. And then I'll cut it off with the angle grinder. And I filled up the threads on the end with polyurethane construction adhesive and let that set overnight. And here I am just trimming off the excess. And I did that so it would be a better fit on the bearing. Now here is another 3D printed part. This is actually the lead screw nut. And once again, I printed the threads that match that threaded rod into this part. And the reason why it's so long is to eliminate backlash. This worked perfectly on the old CNC, except I actually tapped out a piece of solid plastic for it there. But this is a lot easier. First of all, I can make it in two pieces so that it comes apart and can be taken off easily and replaced because it's 3D printed, I can have a new one in a couple hours. Now I need to cut the linear bearings to the right length. And once again, I marked out with tape. And that goes in and tight up against that lip that I cut into the plywood. And I get that clamped in place using my fancy new aluminum clamps. And now my VIX bit won't work here because it's too deep. So what I did was I took a screw and I sharpened it on the end so it's pointy and it fits precisely in those holes. And that point will make a mark where I can use the correct size drill bit to drill out the hole for the screw. And I'll know that it's perfectly centered. I got one side done and then I can do the other side. Next, I need to cut more 1 8 inch aluminum. And this might look a little bit iffy, but the block that I have here has double sided tape on the bottom so that it sticks to the aluminum as I finish pushing it through the blade. And you can see the tape, it's stuck to the aluminum and I put it back on the block because I need to cut two of these. And then when I got two of them cut, I've got them taped together so I can drill both at the same time. And like the plates that go on the bottom of the side extensions, these ones go on the top. And mainly what these do is they cover the linear bearing to keep cuttings and other stuff from falling in and messing up the bearings. So after I had all the holes drilled through both pieces, I can countersink these holes as well. Because once again, I'm using flathead screws to fasten these in place. And because everything that I'm putting on this machine is adding stiffness and strength, it's very important that everything is lined up properly. And I'm checking this as I drive the screws in. And I'm using the straight edge of the chisel to check that. Anything handy that's straight is a straight edge. And drive a screw, check to make sure that it lines up, and then move on to the next. And I did that on both sides. Now here's where I've got to fix that problem that I had. My holes are very slightly off and I'm not talking about a lot, but they don't have to be off a lot. 
And what I'm pointing to here is that I already tried to fix this. I glued in dowels that I redrilled and still it wasn't in the right place. So I take the motor off altogether and I've made another 3D printed part, except this one is a mounting plate that'll fit in a recess in that back piece. And I'm cutting the recess on the table saw, doing it in multiple passes. Then I can put the end back in place and use the same screws to screw it back in, making sure that they're either flush with the surface or just below it. And then I can put that mounting plate in and that's held on with a couple of small screws. And once again, I designed the part so that the holes are threaded for number eight screws that I can drive in. And you're probably saying, oh, that's gonna let go. Well, if it does, it does, and I can fix it. But I don't think that'll be a problem at all. In the next video, I'll be starting work on the gantry. And if you don't want to miss that, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel.